Hello YouTube. This is Oh I'm, YouTube. I'm, I'm trying was to wondering make, why you had the yeah. camera up. Yes. Uh, I'm trying to do the easiest thing we can filming. I'm at Chelsea's place right now over in Portland researching for Drift Week 3 and let's make a video. What do you want to talk about? I know. Let's talk about how we met. I love how this has any control. Do you for want to me talk about something ever. else? How we met. Yes. Man. That was a long time ago. I have a really bad memory, so you start. We... I don't think we first met. Oh, maybe we first met at FD Texas Qualifier in 2005? I thought we met at No Problem that Raceway in Louisiana. That. that was after that. Okay, so it would have been 2005 at Gulf Greyhound Park in the back parking lot. Chelsea came down in a Miata. Is that correct? Yep. It was. I was in high school. Still. Black. I had spray to... painted black. Mm, turbo. It? it was turbo. And you came down to qualify, and if I remember correctly, you got thrown out. Yeah. John, <laughs> Is that true? I think John Yim and Andy N mm -hmm. or Andy Luck kicked me out back when they were both in Houston. I think John Yim's still driving though, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think they kicked me out. He was driving, a, I remember, because it was a Maroon Explorer at the time. Was mm -hmm. that John's? Yeah, that was Alex, Expedition. That Expedition. was Alex Bahana's, Bahana's vehicle, but it was probably John Yim. Yeah, it kicked me out because I I finished the run and drifted past the finish line, and I, like, turned around. But when I turned around, I was, like, just lightly blipping the throttle to just, like, continue. Mm -hmm. And then I stopped and drove back to the pits, and he thought I was... Drifting. Drifting past the finish line, which I was sliding, but I wasn't like, you know, it's just like a controlled, like, unwind. Yeah. And I think I had some very choice words with him that it had a lot of four-letter curse words involved in it. And so then you were, they asked me to leave. <laughs> you were not a nice kid. No, I was a nice kid. And how old were you? I was like 16 or 17, maybe. Man, I must have been early, early 20s. It would have been 05. Yeah, I don't know how old I was in No. 5. I was probably like 26. I remember oh, not early 20s. pulling the trailer up to school, taking class, finishing a test, and then like running out to the trailer, and like it was parked with the hazards on in front of the school, and mm -hmm. then driving straight to the event with the Turtec guys with like no sleep. So you were coming out of Florida then? Yeah. Or it would have been South Florida. Okay. So I lived in Texas. You lived in Florida. We met up at the first Formula D qualifier. How'd you do? Not good. You, well, you got kicked out. I did. I felt like I was driving super solid. That's right. Yeah. I was going to say, I was driving super Me too. solid. And then it poured right when qualifying started. And the little Corollas won. Remember? Yes. With the, they brought him wait, out. And that was, was Ernie Fix, guys. Ernie Fixmer, wasn't it? No. I don't remember. It was one of Taka's guys. With like a dolphin and something else yeah. painted on the side. But we were doing great. It rained and then we didn't do well, which is so lame. Okay, Welcome so fast to forward. D, yeah. like half the rounds. Fast forward. Uh, but also, if we didn't do well in the rain or we couldn't keep our mouth shut, we shouldn't have been driving Formula D. We so would have never made it anyway. But to be funny, we went and drove an event afterwards. Mm -hmm. And I think you won. At No Problems Raceway. Oh, was it the next day? It was two days That's after. why I remember that as the same time. Okay, so no problem raceway, yeah, which so you is no longer used. First, and I ended up second, and because we battled for the win, you were mm -hmm. in your silver twin turbo Z that made less power than a stock Z, I think, back then. No, it it did pretty well out there. It made it? a lot of smoke. Okay, it just had one of those problems where I think it was like on I an have e video of this. We'll cue it. It's on my YouTube. Do you really channel. have it? It's right here. Oh wow! It was. We'll put it right here. It's going to be up there over here. Side. So it was a. Uh, it was an e manage blue, and as soon as the thing like started cooking, I had an e manage on my Miata too. Then a blue, yeah. Oh, yeah. On the three fifty Z, the three fifty Z would like start pulling timing or something. It would get real slow after a couple laps. Mm. So it'd be like four hundred horsepower, and then three hundred, and then probably two fifty, and then you just stop. Yeah, because I remember you like always popping your trunk and disconnecting the battery, <laughs> and I was like, I, I don't remember, remember that. That could be real. Yeah. So you lost to a stock power 350Z. Because you drove that for a while. Yeah, Yeah, my Miata yeah. yeah, made like about 200 horsepower. So the same as my Z. Yeah, probably. At that point. Okay, so I won you were 500 bucks. Than me back then. We, this is a joke though. I was, I'm, I was yeah, a better driver. Yeah, you were a better driver than me back then. That's not true anymore. Um, 
I remember winning. I won five hundred bucks, and this is no, a joke. No, I won five hundred bucks. You won a thousand dollars. Oh, really? Yeah, you won a thousand. Oh. Okay, so I remember this because it helped tell. Uh, I mean, no, you tell the story. I remember because I couldn't get home because I didn't have enough money to get home, and I went over to him and I'm like, I'm gonna need that thousand bucks, and you were like, Nope. I'm like, Well, you're gonna give me that thousand bucks because like I'm not making it home without that. And I think I battled against you on some tires from a road race, dude, from that event because I ran out of tires because we weren't even really going and then you were like oh it's on your way home like let's go to this event I'm like okay yeah and what did I say specifically I think I said why don't you load up on the Turtek trail and get that yeah I think here. you just said like I got kicked out of that event too by Aaron oh okay and then fast forward so that was no problem raceway in Louisiana that was a second event 15 years ago oh my god and then I remember <clears throat> we were having another we were drift awful event at driving. Let's just put that out there. Everyone was awful at driving. So, like, you guys that are drifting that have a car, in two days were probably better than we were at that event. And we were mm -hmm. probably already drifting for, what, four years? Three or four years? I, w I think I was two or three years into it at that point. Yeah. But there was no instruction. We didn't know None. what we were doing. We were, like, awesome, though. We thought we were so good when we could link that road course. Well, the cool thing about drifting is, is regardless of how good you are or any of those things, you can still have just as much fun... 15 years ago, spinning out. For like sure, we're still having sure. just as much fun. We just were well, terrible. The other thing that was nice is there was no expectations. Like when you were like able to do figure eights and not spin, you were like the shit back then. You know? Yeah. Like somebody maybe did figure eights better than you, but it was still like, I can do that. So it didn't matter. Now that we're talking about this, memories are kind of flooding black back. I remember the next event I think I saw you at. You called me on the phone or texted me, and I invited you to Gulf Greyhound Park, and I was like, I can get you free entry. Oh, yeah. So I got him free entry to an event at Gulf Greyhound Park. I was at and... my mom's house. Yeah. Because my mom lives like 20 minutes from there. And you were like, do you have your car? And I was like, yeah, it's out on the trail. And you were like, I got, I'll get you comped so you can come <laughs> drive. I'm like, free driving is sick. And I remember we <laughs> laid out tires as a tire wall. And yeah, like we drifted yeah, yeah. up to them, and we were tandeming. And I remember transitioning. like We felt like hot shit. Yeah. It was good. That was a practice thing. Okay, now I don't remember the next event. Where was the next event? It might have just been the first of D1 in Arizona. You mean Nopi? Oh, no, it would have been Nopi after that. Nopi. Okay, it would have yeah. been Nopi. That would have been 2007? Mm, no, 06. 2006? Yeah, because oh, XDC was 08, I guess. No, D1 was 09. That would have put Nopi in 07 and 08. So I always get D1 mixed up because I went and drove D1 in Japan, but it was at the end of that season. Well, and in, in the U.S. at English Town in 2006. Oh, so I didn't drive that. So we drove a full season of Nopi yep. in 2008, and in 2007, I think we drove an abbreviated series. We did. So in 2007, we went to Arizona and maybe Denver. Denver, we definitely went to. Yeah. Denver was crazy. So Underneath up, the bridge and stuff. Yeah. Up until this point, we had only driven... This is... I should have set this camera up better. I'll go like this. Ugh. Ugh. So in 2000... Just back up. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but for the Denver event, that was the first event we all went out and did like uh, kid stuff. First of all, we all went to bars, we went to a strip club, we went to a party yeah. where there was some girl the... that everyone drew on her face. Oh yeah, she passed out. And we carried her on the elevator and threw her in the elevator to get rid With of her. With the mattress. Really? And hit every floor on the way out. There's photos of this too. Oh God, there's photos of everything. There's, so, there's a photo of me like standing on the top of one of those like seven foot tall mannequins. Remember that? I don't. But I remember you being underage and probably being in bars when I you were supposed to be there. I was using Brian Wilkerson's ID. Oh, God. I don't, he doesn't even look like you. <laughs> Not at all. He's like five. He said the ID would say five, seven. I would walk in like this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but the Nopi event was the first. I remember trailering out. Yeah. Tyler or Stu. What was the first who. Nopi event? It wasn't Denver. I thought I we know. had an event in Phoenix where my trailer caught might... on fire. No, that was after yeah. that. I don't remember. Anyways, we'll just talk about the Denver one. That was the first one we went out and did fun stuff. But going back to the drift portion, it was the first time I think we met Forrest Wang or right around that time period. We started meeting a bunch of like professional yeah. guys that would go on to become 
some of the best in the world kind of thing. Yeah. But also, everybody totaled their cars. Everybody. Yeah. Stu totaled his car twice. Yeah, there was Russell, so many didn't people. Russell, no, Russell didn't, Russell drive, didn't drive there. Stu totaled his car, though. There were so many people wrecking their cars because the old Bill, Milky tracks were all K-railed out. Yep. Yeah. Bill crashed his car. Nick Hogan was there? Nick Hogan was there. I got to meet Hulk Hogan. Yep. That was in Pittsburgh, Nopi. When we partied with the mouth of the South and Hulk Hogan and all those wrestling dudes. And like, I didn't get to go to that. I felt so awful because I never watched wrestling. I knew who Hulk Hogan was, but my friends were like, we're hanging out with all these people. This is so sick. And I'm like, I don't know who they are, but yeah, this is cool. <laughs> all you old people know like, who these people are. Free booze and free food. Like, mm-hmm. that's what it was. And uh, Nick was always a super cool dude. I actually liked driving and hanging out with him. Some people had some hate for him, but I think he was cool. Yeah, he's different. People raised by like famous people are quite different than normals. Like yeah, us. for sure. So then we, uh... you didn't go to Pittsburgh. I don't. Think that was so, another no. track. The first event of that series was in Orlando, or was in South Florida. Mm-hmm. That was the first round of that series. Of Nopi. Of Nopi. Oh, I remember going to the finals. Mm-hmm. And I remember... And Juan Lee was a dirt tire sponsor. Remember that? With, with no. uh, Oh, Marty, Marty, with Marty. Marty and, guys? and yeah. uh, the S3 guys. Okay, I remember that. Yep. The Nopi, for you guys that don't know what Nopi was, they were a very large car show thing that put well, drifting they were on a board. Distribution uh, sales deal. So, like, any... When you ordered import parts, you ordered it from Nopi back in the day. Like, think about, like, Turn 14 or... Any of those big distributors now, that's what Nopi was back in the day. You'd look through magazines, remember? Mm-hmm. And they'd have like four or five pages of Nopi with like all the body kits and exhausts and intakes and all that and stuff. And their shows were huge, huge. and they were decades old. 50,000 um, people at them. The Nationals was absolutely and massive. Atlanta. It was way bigger than Formula D at oh the time. Oh my gosh, it was they huge. They had TV It shows. was like Monster Jam huge. Yeah. TV show oh. on Speed Vision. Yeah. I would win sometimes when I won. I think I got five several grand. five grand checks. Yeah. No. Yeah, I think it was checks. The national. They made you do all your taxes grand, and stuff. I think it was. So I was either first or second with Nathan Braz on the second oh, year yeah. of Nopi. That's and right. they pieced out like a week before the finals. Yeah. And I was leading points or like win. chopping it up. Yeah, I was going to win, I felt like. And they shut it down and turned it into like just a demo there or oh. something. Oh. I remember that. That was brutal. It was going to be a lot of money. Those were, but I did win. I think days. I won like thirteen or fourteen thousand dollars there. But this was back in the day when you'd have an event like that, right? And like FD dudes would just show up mm-hmm. in their FD. Cars. Oh yeah, Bill Sherman showed yeah, up to one of the like events in the Alex NG Pfeiffer when he was driving FD, and like all the dude uh, Blake Fuller, like all those dudes with people that you probably guys don't even know. But the only one that ever beat us was, was Bill, Bill Sherman. And, and his, Bill was amazing. He was really good. He yeah. was such a good driver for, especially back in the day. He was ahead of the time, and their cars were so ahead of the time. Like, basically, kind of how RTR is now is how those cars were yeah. back then. And Juku built some really good cars, and they had like a couple like really high high dollar drivers too. Like Robbie Unzer drove. Like mm-hmm. obviously, he's not anything now. High dollar. He probably <laughs> owes high dollar. Um, but yeah, those cars were like. SR twenty twos with like thirty seventy six turbos. No, there were like, twenty eight seventy ones with point four six or four eight uh, hot maybe. sides. Weirdo engines. But they made really good power and they were super light. I remember yeah. them being like twenty three hundred pounds. It was crazy. Um, so like yeah, but like we and we were driving. You had a decent car then. You had you know an what's LS funny though is looking back car. at that. My oh, no, car you was had an SR back then. Yes, I had an SR for the beginning. A good one, too. And at the very end, right when I he was going to... just went on to... Full Race's website and just ordered the whole catalog full Me? of bougie turbo stuff on your SR. No, car. mine was all cheap stuff. I thought you had all the ballers. No, stuff. I had a 2871 at my prime. <laughs> His prime. Um, when he but, drove FD. So I drove FD, <laughs> and I drove with the 2871, and the car misfired because of coil pack, and we didn't fix it in time, so I did my qualifying. Or Atlanta or something. Yeah, right? I think I got 22nd out of 16 people. I only got a couple <laughs> laps. And I was just like, screw this. So I went home, and I was like, what has more coil packs and can't misfire <laughs> like, and take you out? And LS. You got to quit playing with that. That's going to be loud. It was a... Uh, it was, uh, <laughs> it was, um, I think I had the second LS swap ever. 
Yeah, you had in a you had a very early stage, yeah. LS, and it was a gnarly LS. It was a gnarly too. LS as well. So it was one of those things where it was the killer car, and I it didn't was even really think about really it like good. that. It was super lightweight. Yeah, it was twenty five hundred pounds with a four hundred and fifty horsepower and LS. stock knuckles. No, you yep, had cut nope, knuckles. I did not have cut knuckles at that time. I didn't have cut knuckles until D one. If you remember really? that when I got the MA Motorsports one. No, I got Derek ones. When everybody got yeah, MA yeah, Motorsports ones. ones I nope, never yeah. had those. Mm. So I didn't I had knuckles from the beginning. I didn't get knuckles until not from the beginning, let me rephrase that. From when I started yeah. whenever my Miata turned red is when I had knuckles on that. Yeah. Okay, go back. So we did Nopi. Yeah. Uh, I remember Nopi was just like everybody would get drunk. He's she's <laughs> everybody would get drunk every night. I'm I'm just doing stuff. Everybody would be drunk in grid. Oh, yeah. It was a disaster. But it was a lot I of fun. I was never drunk in grid. That's because you were a child, but yes, you were. No, I wasn't. You were high. I, no. no. I definitely had partied, for sure. But, like, I don't think I was ever... I might have been hung over. But, like, you have some drivers, not to name anybody, but they would be in the driver's meeting still drinking. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, I can't be hung over. I need to keep drinking. And you're like, yeah. oh, my God. It was this weird party thing. I didn't really understand it too well. Yeah. But I think you get a bunch of, like, party people that influence, like, the better drivers were influencing a bunch of the other drivers. And then Probably. everybody was a mess. But the driving level was incredibly, I don't want to say low, mm. but... Um, it wasn't very it, good. It oh, we also had Kenji Yamanaka drive. Yeah, but I was gonna say yeah. it didn't. The the driving level never drug, really. The drug emporium car. Oh my god! I don't think we need to go into no, that. No, we don't. But the driving level. I meant drift emporium. Yes. the The drifting level did not scale up quickly like it did in Formula D. Formula D, the driving level <sighs> scaled fast. I don't know, man. You don't know. I go back and I watch like pre two thousand ten driving and it was no, it's pretty, pretty bad. bad. Yeah. <laughs> I so, mean at the time it was great. It was the pinnacle of it. You had guys all like back then a lot of people from Japan and stuff were coming over and driving and doing all that. Um but yeah, no not not so much anymore. But yeah. So you were in your Miata, how well did the Miata like develop and stuff was or was awful. It there was no development at all? in it same that was car. the first chassis that i ever like drove but i was so broke all the time that i just had like no like tuning software it was like stock everything i thought you had some ecu from another car i, had, I did i had a an ecu from like a 323 gtx like the, the mm -hmm. mazda turbo setup anyways and i just and then i got an e-manage blue but, like, I was tuning it myself. Yeah. I knew nothing. It made power, and the air-fuel ratios was good, but, like, the timing map was all stock, and I just kept pouring, like, C16 in it. And I don't even know how I afforded that. The Band-Aid. Yeah, it was. It was like, oh, won't one ever blow up on this. Yeah. It's true. But, yeah, I look back at that, and I'm like, I don't even know how those cars run. Like, when we went to Denver, and we were a mile high, I was like, I don't understand why my car is so rich. Yeah. I didn't even know back then. And you're like, oh, it's because we're a mile in the air. His car had a little tiny exhaust, like a train thing, out the hood with a little flapper thing. And when you press the gas, it'd go ting, ting, ting. And it would make tinging sound. Do you remember that? I well, did. of course you remember it. You made it. I made it because I ran out of tubing. And I was like, oh, wait, I can just flip this upside down. <laughs> and now I'm the first guy to hate on everyone that has exhaust that comes yeah. out the hood. His exhaust was like this high out the hood. It almost went over the roof of the Miata. Well, it did. So it didn't get my windshield all dirty. <sighs> Okay, so at what point, I remember, not until D1 did you get the BMW. So during the Nopi days, I was in Florida for a trip or something, and I drove a 328, mm -hmm. like a stock one. It just like had springs and a handbrake, like stock everything. And I'm like, this is better than my drift car. That like, <laughs> this is stock. And I'm like, I just, like, can I take another lap in this? And my friend Shane at the time was like, yeah, dude, take another lap. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so good. I'm yeah. like, I'm selling my Miata. This is it. <laughs> and I think I went, I actually sold, because I was going around with Drift Brigade at the time, mm -hmm. and I had a dually, and I didn't need the dually anymore. So I sold my dually and bought an E36 M3 for like 3500 bucks, And it blew the head gasket like immediately. At least I thought it did. But it ended up being the guy before me who had it, never tightened the head stubs down. Mm -hmm. They were just like finger tight. So, because the motor was apart. Yeah, they took they did oh, a head okay. gasket on it, and they never torqued the head. But anyway, so weird, so weird. Um, 
But yeah, so I bought the M3 and I was like slowly building it while I still had the Miata. I was driving some demos, like making a little bit of money here and there. And then I started working at a, like a exotic car dealership. Mm -hmm. And I was making like a little bit of money and I was dumping all of it into that. And I turboed it and we did knuckles and cage and all this stuff, chasing the whole, like, we need some power. Like all these dudes that beat me before. And that car was like the first time I took a lot of time to go over all the suspension stuff and mm -hmm. make sure everything was right. And then we did knuckles on it and Derek ended up redoing the knuckles on it. Yeah. And it was better. I was going to say, I don't remember everything being right with that car. No. I remember wasn't. it being pretty good. The chassis was really good though. Like yeah. the suspension and subframe stuff. And like, I kind of went through and did all that, which I never did before in the Miata. I just threw some like, wait, did you drive that thing in Nopi or only D1? No, only, uh, yeah, I did drive it in Nopi. Okay. Cause I was going to say, I remember you coming out and bringing it to Nopi in and then stomped cause it didn't make boost or something. It was slow, mm -hmm. but then by the time you got it to D1, it started to get really good, really fast. Yeah. And it was the first time I ever saw you start developing as a driver really fast. Like before you were co like cocky, but then after that you were confident. Like maybe, yeah. don't you remember how confident we were at D1? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah by the time sure. we got through to D1, I remember just being like, we felt like we were hot stuff. Yeah. I think, like I said, for me, it was like. Felt like little heroes. I think I finally, like when I turbo the car originally, it didn't work out that great. It didn't make a lot of power. But I think I fixed that and mm -hmm. like got it to a reliable power. And then it was all just like, I could start nerding out all the suspension stuff. Like, oh, like no one else pays attention to any of this. They just throw shocks on their car and go drive it. I'm like, well, let me figure out what makes this car drive better. And I just started, because it's free to like adjust things and try it and try different things. And adjust shocks and I was working with BC at the time. So I was like, oh, send me all these springs. I'm just gonna try different springs and figure all that out. Back when like you just changed spring rate and it made your car way better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so simple. Um, but yeah, it did come together in D1. Started really figuring the car out. Started getting some really good chase runs. We had some, obviously Daigo was there and like mm -hmm. the Team Orange guys, which they were just stomping our dicks in the dirt. It was like, <laughs> dude, like- Not at first, we were qualifying really well they at first. They were just- driving. Play yeah, with they us. Playing. They were so they were much just, better. They were just so nice that they were yeah. like, let's let these Americans feel good. So they don't, mm -hmm. like, it was, it was cute because mm -hmm. you would see, like, sometimes there would be some things that would go on in the pits and the Japanese guys would get, like, a little bit pissed off. And it was like, holy crap, look at them drive. Like, oh, man, we're awful again. <laughs> yeah. And this was, for you guys that don't know, back in 2009... D1 GP did a full season in the US. And I think it was owned by an American. It was. And he bought the rights to D1 USA and had to bring over like D1 drivers and the D1 judges. Yep. And the little tiny boxes that judge. The um, drift box. The drift box. So we got judged oh by that. Oh my gosh. And it was a difficult thing to learn how to work on that. And Daigo stomped us in every qualifying session. I did pretty good first. in qualifying back yeah. in the day because the angle was always so important. And with the E36, I had so much more wheelbase than a lot of people. And I always, like, we always had pretty gripped up cars. Like, I think a I lot of... Not. Oh, you did. In mm -hmm. D1 days, we did. I don't think I did. No, because you had a 2,500-pound car with 460 horsepower. Um, yeah, but I don't think I was gripping it up. I think it no, was just but just accidentally. I never even checked air pressures back then. I just, whatever we mounted them at, that's I, what I ran. I'm not exaggerating. I certainly did, for sure. I did not. I but just, we, my we, car was so easy to drive. And then we got, yeah, we were always on Dunlops back then. Mm -hmm. And then... Which By then we moved to Nexon. To Nexon for D1. Dunlop gave me lung cancer, but they were also <laughs> like an excellent tire sponsor. They did smoke a lot. That gave us so many t Oh, I broke my chopstick. See, you're he messing with it under the table. Yeah. Why well, you take his? <coughs> because my wife isn't here. Yeah. Anyway, oh so <laughs> I feel like we're rambling a lot. But yeah, D1 was the was like, I was super thankful for D1 because it was like a Formula D traveling everywhere a lot of professional things going on but like the entry barrier of cost was lower and they took and care of the drive qualify. they took care of the drivers well <laughs> yeah. like you know they fed us they fed us and like hospitality um, and it was cool like my first time really getting to drive with some of these japanese dudes who i didn't know who they were other than like team orange from, like video game i remember when i met daigo saito i'm like who the hell is this guy mm -hmm. and then i saw him driving i'm like Yo, this dude rips. And he brought a JZX 100 over. And for the, I, and they the weren't first even cool time yet. I had seen one in my life. And I'm like, 
that is the coolest thing ever. His rear doors have over fenders on them. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, damn. And then we quickly found out he was super fast. And I remember just chasing that speed game immediately when I drove at Daigo because I'm like, he's on 295, 35, 19s. Remember those? Ad Van Niovas. Ad Van Niovas. And I'm like, I have to be faster than him. So, like, I remember, like, I was shown to the track with, like, a friend of mine ran a Daytona prototype uh, team. So I was showing up with their fronts, which are like 315 rain tires, at like 40 tread wear. Remember that? I remember when you ran those at English Town, and yeah. they lasted like 30 seconds. No, they lasted two laps, but back then that was insane. Yeah. Like you got, what, in, with the next ones, we probably got 30 laps out of yeah. a pair of tires. And I put them on, and I was like, oh my gosh. Like, and I, I remember just turning the power up until I could drift <laughs> it. And I remember being like, oh, like we tuned the car to 20 pounds of boost, and I was running like all of it, which I never did. And uh, I'm like, damn, this is cool. And I was like bit by the speed bug immediately. I remember them chunking to pieces. Oh, yeah. when They, <laughs> they got were to like the hitting end, us as he went by. Yeah, when they get to the end, they would mm -hmm. just like fall apart in these big long strips. And then, and then they'd have no grip at all. Because they were rain tires, so when they got hot, they were done. I remember you also having to mutilate your fenders to fit those things. Mm, yeah. He just like... I didn't care. I mean, I was chasing the two speed. inches of stretch on like stock body because it wasn't wide body at that time. And the mm. car was black or green, and you just black. pulled the bejesus out of that thing. It was smooth still. Mm. It was smooth still. No, it wasn't. I'll find photos. Mm -mm. Right here. <laughs> I'm making all I this editing them as for 335s. you. Maybe they were. I think they were. They were huge. Like they I remember huge. pulling onto the grid, and like people being like, "Those are like steamrollers." Yeah, on the everybody's dock. like, mm, "I don't know about that." It worked though. Some Robbie Bulger stuff. It was. Um, I had that two fifteen. I think, 335 stagger. <laughs> I think the D1 thing for me was kind of like the nostalgic, like golden little time period where we had a lot of fun and there was no stress competing. Yeah. I don't remember any stress. Uh, that probably my stress was just being able to have enough money to get to the next race always. Yeah, by the time <laughs> you went to Formula D though, I could imagine that it has never been stressless again. Has it always been stressful? It's a lot better with the RTR set up for sure. Yeah. Oh, you did have a lot of years of You're whatever. forgetting about XDC though. The golden era for me. Oh, that is. So let me tell you my <laughs> part of XDC really quickly. Yeah. Um, by the time we had finished up with... I finished like D1. fourth in D1 that year. Did you really? Yeah. They invited me to Japan. Went oh, to Japan. my car was broken at the final yeah. round. Yep. And it was so frustrating. The car, every time I would throw it, the steering would bind up and want to kill me. And you couldn't figure and it out. And I had a mechanic with me trying to help. Just the header. It was the, the header steering. touching the steering because of a dead motor. Anyways, without that... He's forgetting to tell you that it was like that the last two events before that. He just drove through it and never yes. fixed it. And then it got worse. <laughs> Anyways, long story. Oh, I, I remember you on the top of our Texican three-car trailer. Yeah. Like with a sledgehammer and a pry bar hammering your header. And the motor mount was so bad that he was hammering at the front of the car. And I could see your exhaust moving at the back of the car. I'm sure I also strapped it over with the strap and just drove with the strap. You did. But you did. what I was going to say is... I was so not confident at that event. I thought I forgot how to drive and I was so embarrassed. And it was the first time someone posted like a viral video of like, oh, an LS1 car. And I was so bad in the video and it went viral and it was embarrassing. Crushed him. It was terrible. Anyways, I was going to say real quickly before I give it over to him, by the end of D1 GP, I was going through so many tires and getting so sick of like changing tires in a competition format. And like we were taking 80 tires to an event. Oh, we have to have photos of that. There we, has to we, be some. I there. had a wedge trailer that we traveled on, and we'd take an the alternate. The whole like, inside of the trailer would have all the way forty front to foot back. long straps that we'd lace all the tires through and just strap them like they were all just hanging, mm -hmm. shaking underneath. Not us. even locked up. We would Not take eighty everywhere. tires. Yeah. But my point was, is it got so miserable changing the tires and like doing the competition thing. I wanted to quit, so I did one round of XDC and I quit. Mm -hmm. I was like, I am through with this. I'm gonna spend all my time doing the green car, right? I'm, no, I mean, I was gonna spend all my time doing just grassroots stuff, which I'd already been doing for a long time, and making sure I hosted them and everything. So I pieced out right as you got really good and rocketed off. Just if I would have stuck around, maybe I would have been really good. You could have been better than me. I don't think so. You have the killer spirit. You get angry. Yeah. I don't get angry. Maybe. You yell. <laughs> I yell. Complain. Okay, so now tell us about Nopi. No. Uh, yeah, we talked XCC. about Nopi. There XCC. really wasn't much else to say about that. No, but the yeah, XCC. XCC I mean, so the, that's when you rock A lot off. of the guys from D1 
who helped that form this group and they did XDC, which was Extreme Drift Circuit, which was the next, like, and, like, think of these, like, your local Pro-Am series, but all over the U.S. So it's, like, you'd go to each of these events and, like, the best guys that are local to those events would go and show up and drive maybe just the one round or two. And then there was, like, maybe 15 or 20 of us that would, like, chase the whole series around. And uh, I think the first year of XDC, we were, like, they reached out to me to do it. And I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. Like, cause D one was still going to happen. You know, mm -hmm. we didn't know D one wasn't happening yet. And I think they paid us to go. Didn't they? D one the paid us to year. drive too. Did they? Maybe. Oh my God. So a lot of people don't see this behind the scenes. When we drove Nopi, we were all getting paid pretty well through the winnings. I so mean, I won pretty I good mean, money. Paid pretty well. I didn't really pay, but I get paid very well. Oh, well, I got paid pretty well. I got like 13 and a half grand or something in one season mm. doing that. Yeah. And, Probably. but when we got to D1, they called me or they called you or somebody and they're like, we want you guys to drive in the series because we were doing really well. Yeah. And um, I remember just being like, ah, if you want me there, you're going to have to pay me, which right. I never thought was an option. We were like series. almost making a joke because yeah. we were all like, we'll just go drive for fun at your events and yeah. everyone's events. Like, I don't want to go drive all this and spend all that money. Like, and then they were like, oh, well, like how much is it going to cost? And yeah. I think they paid for all of our fuel. Yeah. And, and entry hotels fees. So no one probably knows this, but <laughs> when we went and drove D1, they were like, we would show up. And they would just give us cash yeah, for our yeah, entries yeah. and all of our fuel, yep. which turned and into a huge us. ordeal at the yeah, end, if you did. remember, it which did. we don't want to talk about. No. But it was a huge ordeal at the it end. It ended up with me going to the owner's house in Beverly Hills and knocking on his door and shaking him upside down for money. <laughs> Anyways, this is all the behind the scenes That was stuff. so good, though. I mean, it's funny. So when you get to XDC, right. you're still getting paid to drive, right? Uh, so there, no. So I wasn't, but I had a couple partners involved that were helping me enough to pay for the series. And then we're talking like, I ran a whole XDC season for like 15 grand, mm -hmm. you know, like everything. The car, because it was already built the first year. Um, and then uh, like tires were covered uh, from, I think I was on Nexon then. Mm -hmm. Um so most of it was like covered and it was super cheap to run back then. And it was like six events, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, so oh. I, I ended up doing really well in the beginning, in the second half of the season. The first half I had some problems like, like blowing motors and running on multiple cylinders missing. Stuff. Yeah, I didn't know for stuff. <laughs> and then once I finally got it together, the, the company Technica Motorsports I started working with gave me a motor and like a tuned my car I got it set up way better it was like 500 wheel and like it just ran for like three or four years like that it was perfect it was crazy um, reliable yeah it was super reliable I would show up and put gas in it and drive it it was pump gas back then um but yeah so I started really getting the car dialed to the point where I was almost like a bully there like I had so much more forward grip than most of the other drivers did and because I was like kind of paying attention to things that I would just like sit there and just drive up on everybody's door the that's right time. when you started getting good and you would put tire marks on everybody's doors yep. and piss them off and you're just like ha 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 screw you right, so i said i was yeah. kind of just like a bully you were about bullying it. people but to the point where they hated you about that and no yeah, one wanted to drive with you in texas to drive with me. <laughs> yeah because he learned how to get up on somebody's door and then he was a jerk about it no i was having fun back then. no and that is but that was fun. cool back going. then you were like, not it was actually people. really cool to like door everybody back then which yeah. i guess it is still at doors point. were cheap back then for right. everything everything and uh so i think i ended up third in the first season at the end of xdc and i was like it's time to build a car like a real one so i bought like an e36 shell and acid dip and painted and caged Colin from Toxic Fab uh, who does like rad knives now is like built me this super sick TIG welded cage and everything was purple on the car it was like it was dipped it looked amazing you did and a was, reveal for it yeah you took it seriously we took it super serious you and that borrowed was like, wheels from me to I did. reveal <laughs> but the car was like 2450 pounds it was rad with 500 wheel on 275s which like wouldn't even be legal in FD because of too much tire to weight and I think that year I like podiumed every XDC round except PGP when my car broke there. But Corey Hosford will let you know that he beat me there. 
I got knocked out in top 32. <laughs> but I ended up winning a championship that year with that car. And I was, like, working at BC at the time and all that. And they were, like, seeing that I was just, like, mopping the floor of everybody. And I was going to all these other events, too, and trying to, like, drive and win. And I was, like, doing really, really well at these other, like, payout events. And then uh, BC was, like... Do you want to drive FD? And I was like, mm, I guess. I've never, <laughs> I've never been to an FD event before. This was yeah. like 2011. Like FD had been going on for a long time. I've been drifting forever, but I like would not allow myself to go to an FD event because I know if I went, I would like waste all of my money trying to chase that. And I was like, you know, and oh, we did a bunch of FD proams too. Mm -hmm. The invitational ones, like where you got your FD license. Remember when before they did the actual series? Well, I did my FD license back in like 2006. Yeah. And then we got it again in 08, or 09, I mean. Yeah, I had him a, I had him a bunch of times, I think. Yeah, I had him a few times. Uh, but, like, there was just no thing. And back then, it was like, yo, it's going to be $50,000 to run I had an, FD. I had one of my cars totaled at FD before I even got oh, to yeah. drive at FD. by Derek. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. But, yeah, so I had an FD license forever, and I'm like, dude, where am I going to come up with 50 grand to run FD? And mm -hmm. now, if, now you can't. 50 grand to run FD is like a pipe dream, dude. Mm-hmm. You couldn't do that ever. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so BC was like, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's run FD. And I was like, okay. And that was maybe in August uh, of 2011. So I, you know, turned my car up, got a bunch of power in it. It was like 700 wheel and changed tires and like got, to, I was, I think I was on hand cook back then. And uh, we had a really good car to show up at FD in and. We had, I think we, had, we bought a toter home that year because I was just like, well, I'll buy a toter home like with FD or with uh, BC. I'll stay in the toter home. The crew can stay in the toter home. We'll also haul two other teams' cars so we can make money to cover all that so the cost will be even. And we like showed up and ran like a full deal FD season. It's pretty rad. It's kind of a quick, quick move up. It looked impressive immediately. Yeah. But that was the thing. It was like, I don't really want to do it unless we're going to do it right. Mm -hmm. So my first FD event I ever went to, I drove. It was like, why, like, like everybody back in the day was always credit card racing and blowing all their money or their parents' money or whatever with no direction. They were just, like, chasing. Like, they weren't, like, actually making it happen. They were just chasing this thing that they didn't even know what they were chasing, you yeah. know, except that it ended at Formula D. And I think there's still a lot of people that do that. This is kind of interesting because telling the story, you can hear where our paths diverge. Because he was driving and living in Texas, and he was driving at Lone Star Drift events. Like, you probably did. It was 20, fabricated motorsports. Oh, a long time ago. But you probably drove with, like, 20 or 30 events with us at least. Yeah, for um, sure. And then you started to go pro, and you do less and less stuff with us because, you know, you weren't even living in the same place anymore. I was just um, living wherever the FD event was next <laughs> or XDC event was next. I remember yeah. being like, well, I live on the East Coast. You know, like, if I'm going – or Texas, or wherever. If I'm going to California and the next event is in Seattle, like, well, I'm just going to stay in California for three weeks and get my car ready and hang out on couches and go to the next round, you know? That's amazing, that kind of commitment, because you have to have a sponsor behind you that allows you to not come to work if you're well, working back for then, me. I didn't have that. <laughs> right, but have, I was going to say... I didn't even were... have a job. I was just working, like, sublet jobs in every location that I was going to and buying and selling stuff. That's crazy. Um, yeah, because, like, obviously you can't have a job and travel that much. Like, it didn't work. When I was no, in BC, at we would, like, leave the rig. I would fly home and go to work for two weeks and then fly straight back, get the rig, go to the next round, you mm -hmm. know, and just keep doing that. Um, but, yeah, it was BC was, like, the, the only reason I am able to drive FD or was back then or still even is is because of them, for sure. Yeah. Super I say, of oh, them. I'm not in my – oh, wait. Oh, I have one. Oh, Rose. Oh, yeah, Rose. this oh, is yeah. just random because this is the only type of clothing we own. <laughs> and there's a joke, we need pants. Yeah, Cody. BC. Please give Cody, us pants. We need pants because boxers and socks are cheap. We, yeah. can, we can take care of those. But you guys give us shirts and hoodies and all that. But we don't have pants. We need pants. And then maybe shoes. Shoes would be nice too. Aaron I wear only, shoes Aaron with only no logos owns though. one pair of shoes. That's all I can afford. So my cars have more sh shoes than I do. Um, oh, I definitely jumping more back, wheels. I just thought of something we didn't talk about. So while we were, we almost this, have 40 minutes. That's okay. If you People made it this everything. far into this, it's amazing. 
No, people. You guys watch, are so cool for watching this. YouTube videos. I, this or is they like, have no lives. This could be a podcast. It could be, but I have you terrible You could just be listening quality. to this. Just leave it on loop. Make him some extra money. Commercial. Okay. I don't make money on this, but. All right. No, wait. I was going to say this you is actually. You can't make me. money on YouTube unless you're someone like Adam LZ. We lose money. You do yeah. on YouTube. There's no way. Like, I okay, could... wait, wait. We're getting sidetracked. Getting sidetracked. He makes tons of money on YouTube. Don't believe him. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, wait. So going back, there's it a might bunch. I pay for my groceries for the month. Yeah. We were driving around on a three car wedge trailer, and I was yeah. just thinking in my head some my of the dad. other places we went. Yeah. yeah. Every time we had a different truck, we used Tyler Cox's truck. We used. We used um, my truck a lot, though. Because yeah. that was the whole thing. I bought a dually, and you had the trailer. So that was the trade off. A trailer was a lot cheaper. It was $2,500 for my wedge trailer. I think I only paid eight grand for that Dodge that was only a yeah. few years old. Um,. So we did the salvage title, flood car, Dodge. Yeah. That was a good truck, though. What yeah. It's green. We did a lot of professional or semi professional, whatever you want to call events. Did a lot of grassroots drifting. But some of the coolest times you ever did is we got invited to the Indy Racing League, oh, yeah, IRL, IRL yeah. Streets of St. Petersburg, which I've always wanted to go do again. And we took our cars down there and we got to drive the actual IRL competition course. Mm. But in you know front of 80,000 people. But do you know what we did? What? We manji. You had to manji. It was an airport. <laughs> I know. It was an it was airport. Huge. We did manji, but we did 50 year manji. Yeah. That was one of the fastest so, places I ever drove. And just to remind you, I didn't have a handbrake in my competition car at this point. I drove the streets of Long Beach like crazy, whatever, Red Bull track. Once he got drifting, he was fine. But right. It was awful watching him try to enter. He would like shift lock and do like awful things. Why didn't start. we have handbrakes? I had a handbrake. My handbrake always broke off. Like it would physically rip off the tunnel and we didn't have hydros back then. I just had a hand. Break, I had a like cable, cable handbrake break. in my car all the way to FD. No one knows how bad my car was mechanically. It was insanely oh, was bad. It had a lot of nice parts on it, but it was awful. All the suspension and everything was garbage. Like no, all the arms, you, had, you had decent shocks and stuff. I had case ports almost the whole time. Mm, you had stance on that car. And I had stance. And for one event, I had KWs and before we didn't, they fell they apart. didn't have cheap control arms back then, so you had decent control arms. I don't think so. This was pre-China, dude. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Clearly, I don't we, remember we the know. K. I don't remember any of them. But going back to that, I was going to say, we got to drive that track, and that was one of the coolest experiences that I ever cool. had. That was cool. And was, there were so many people. It was 100,000 people. We're drifting through this through the downtown. section. Yeah, downtown, onto the airport, and along the water. And you could see all the people on their boats watching and stuff. That's the first time I think I ever drifted over like 120 miles an hour. Yeah. I remember Pat Gooden will never, he tells me this story like every other time I see him. He's like, I just remember in my, I was in my SR240 and I was coming out of the last turn and I was floored on throttle. And I could see you in my rear view. Like as I was going down a straightaway, you were drifting. This is me like following and like. He was like, I was floored to going as fast as I could go. And like I was going like he's like, I was going like ninety-five miles an hour and you just like at like hundred and thirty miles an hour just passed me, just manging down the straightaway in fifth gear, like because our cars yeah. had serious power for like back then. Like I think my car was like almost five hundred wheel and it was like And we had dunlops back then, yeah. you could roast dunlops. Roast then. And I do also remember being complete bullies on track all oh, yeah. the time. We were always complete bullies, pushing people around track, drifting around them when we shouldn't have been. Yeah. It's like Gadville back in like way back. Yeah, then. I'm sure it was great. Gadville was rad back then, still too. But, but complete bully town. But we, didn't we felt know so about cocky. That. We were because um, for a while we definitely showed up and blowed up, dude. It was good. We didn't like uh, what do you call it. FD was way over here and we didn't drive it. So well, we were we like really in the kitty pool. attention to it, I feel like. No, I didn't even really think about it existing. Yeah. But we were like the the big fish in the teeny tiny pond for a little yeah, while. It was cool. Just because everybody else had SRs and stuff and we had cool cars. And then Bill Sherman would come out and just like rape us. Yeah. It was so bad. He was such <laughs> he a was, good driver. He was so good. I bet you still to this day he could come out yeah. and rip. I mean, I don't think he'd win an FD event, but I think he would rip. I just remembered something. So I remember driving that first Nopia event. It was in Arizona that we drove, or I drove, because I remember yeah, losing it was Florida to Florida before that. I remember losing to Kenji Yamanaka, and I was so excited that I got to drive with him. Yeah, and he was in, in this like FD crazy car. car, and I like high five him, and he's all whatever, and I was like, thank you so much, whatever, and then 
The next year I beat him every single round and I ran up and like grabbed him and hugged him and like swung him around because he's a, not a huge, you know, heavy yeah, guy and I'm much bigger. Dude. And then I was like, this must be so embarrassing to have some like Texan driving some hick, you know, V8 car. Yeah. Like pick him up because I was having so much fun and so excited. <laughs> yeah. I remember I did that to Forrest. You White had hair too. then too. I had some hair. Some. It wasn't great hair. Some. It's all the stress of all this that took it out. Can oh, you think of anything running. else before we end? That was like a shared experience that we did that was cool. Oh, you invited me. So Chelsea for a long time has been way fancier than me. And he invited me to Abu Dhabi in Dubai. That was an amazing trip. Yeah, it was cool. We met. It's we on the a, YouTube. Oh my God, this is actually, I interrupt everybody. But that's on our YouTube that's channel. That's one of our first YouTube videos. And that's a million view, the most popular video on my channel. Is it really? Yeah. Wow. And I mean, it's a crazy video. I but think I did the same video. None of this 50, stuff. 50,000 like, views. That's because <laughs> I'm bigger on YouTube. No, he's no. way bigger. Anyways, he's like, no. You definitely get a lot more no. plays than I do. Yeah. I also haven't uploaded in three months. Yeah. But I just, I'm the, I'm the featuring artist in everyone else's video. None of our stuff is on YouTube from back then. And now. Well, some of my stuff is. If you scroll way deep, I got a video of us from No Problems Raceway. But you didn't vlog it and tell I the didn't. audience the story. I just so there's no put, context. It, I just put it to music and sent it. Right. It's just. Two laps of driving or yeah. something, and there's no context. You need some context. The people like the camera pointed back at themselves. We're giving them tons of context right now. Yeah. So, anyways, my point is, is I don't have a point. Well, yeah. So, I mean, definitely, oh, really we've been that friends for a long time. I've well, blown up a couple that. of your cars that you've lent me over time. Oh. I keep lending him cars, and he hasn't blown them up yet. That's because so I'm good. a kind person that awesome. borrows it because i give him good cars you have you have to follow the trait of this whole video so far all of his cars have been he borrowed nice an sr parts. car from Shit. me with, with no oil in it but it he was put no oil in it it was 2005 you had to check I oil pulled, back it was like 2009 was it? i pulled up to the grid and i'm like aaron this doesn't sound good like the engine sounds good. he's like it's fine just go ahead I hit boost one time, and if no, not, you drove it part of the day, and you had to drive it an hour to get laps, there. Two laps. I did you had drive to, it there. Yes, you drove it an hour. I did. And he picked it up from not me, a friend of mine that had had it for months to in his work driveway. On it. Yes. To work on it. Yes, who was doing mechanic work, and he should have known to check the oil from a mechanic when picking the car up from a mechanic. I had to who part the car out. Who goes gets an oil change? I had to part and that checks car the out. oil after they pay someone to change the oil. I had to part that car out. Yeah. yeah. That's what other car? car though. Oh, I lent you my S13 and you dented it up at an XDC round? Pretty sure no you drove it. Way. You drove my S13 when no. it was green in a competition because I lent it out to multiple people. Oh, no, and you, you all lent dented it to it me. I know so that you. I could get a license for something, didn't you? Yes, I, I remember, and you dented it up for something, which mm -hmm. is no big deal. That car was Maybe. a beater. I also rented it, or not rented it, I, I lend it out. I never rented that car once. You might have lent I, it to me so I could renew my FD license. Remember they made me do that? I think so. I let you do that. I let you do, oh, they didn't accept your XDC license in the end. No, and he they had didn't to come. accept the two other FD licenses that yeah. I had gotten and not used yet. <laughs> so they made him, after he had like three FD licenses, come back to Lone Star Drift again and get another license. And he that's angered, how he can, that's, he anger boned everybody in that one. And I mean, my I drove like a stock 300Z that one time. No, no, I mean like you angered and were all over everyone. Oh, yeah. I yeah, drove like you, were, you were not nice. No, but it was good driving. No, it was. But you bullied people. I did. You were a complete bully on track. Well, I had to win the series to get a license, and I only wanted to drive two out of the four events that you had, so I had to win both of them. <laughs> Oh, is that what you did? Yeah. Oh God. Oh, because and I remember I drove there. I drove the first one and the third one, and then I was like, "Man, I hope I don't have to fly back and spend more money to drive the fourth one." And I did, really? because I was like, "Man, if 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 uh, somebody if somebody went will, I think it was. I'm like, if Will wins." I will be two points shy or something of getting a license, so I had to fly in. And then just borrow my car? I, no, I borrowed that Ky, uh, Mario's G, or Z, I mean. Okay, the, the I remember one. that car. That was a really was good, a good car. car. It's still around drifting in Texas, I think. And I stopped everybody. I don't remember which car it is anymore because it's changed it's colors good. too many times. It was good. Can you think of any other shared experiences for the audience? I feel like there's so many. Oh, we went to Japan. Japan, Multiple times. times. Those are probably the best memories. Australia. He was. We didn't, we didn't go to Australia at the same time, though, did mm -mm. we? 
Poland. Poland. We to, Poland that was, was rad. rad. So a huge shout out to We Wilcox always whenever like people want us to go somewhere and drive, I'm like, Oh, do you want Aaron to come? No, and I didn't, he does the same thing too. I didn't even know he was coming on that oh, trip. Oh really? I had no idea. Tomas invited me and I was just like, Oh yeah, I even arrived on a different day than you that guys. That's cool. I am not even sure I really knew you were coming because it was a last minute trip. And they built us cars. Yeah. The, the Dormanati guys are amazing. They're awesome. We showed up. And between Alexi from Noriaro, Chelsea, and I, they built us three cars. Yeah. Like, last minute, too. I think they called me, like, two or three weeks beforehand. They're like, yeah. yo, are you free these dates? Come drive. And I was like, ah. Please look. have us back, Dormanati. Yeah, that was rad. Please have us back. You guys were super sick. Super fun. Go to their we went, website. We went, they took us all over Poland and showed us all sorts of cool things yeah. and not cool things. We went to Auschwitz. Yeah, that was not cool. I mean, it was cool. That was but cool. like, yeah, not cool. But, yeah, and then... We we had three thirties. I know I had like a three twenty five. No, and you, had a you had you had a three thirty. No, too. I did not. You had the bigger one. Anyways, you had a three thirty and you broke it like two laps out in the beginning of the oh, day. Oh, and then I went down to a three twenty five or it something. It was fine though. I we were on retreads. It His was faster. Matter. But what I was gonna say is, please go to the Dormanati account if you're still on this. And oh, please yeah. have them invite. Aaron and Chelsea back to yes. Poland. We when need did we go? Guys. When did we go? I want to show you this video. We I went have in the bumper sticking video. Nineteen. Yeah. When though? And good weather. Just oh, ask. It to, just ask it Poland. Say hey, show me pictures from Poland. Show me videos from Poland. Siri, show me photos from Poland. This is good video. This doesn't work. Yeah. Oh, it does. <laughs> what? That is so cool. You've never seen that. That is so cool. Here it is. I feel like we should watch this together. All right, so I'll put this on we're the tandeming, and I clipped him on transition. Oh my god! Ripped his bumper off, and it's attached to my car still. That was Jammed so good. In there. My car not even affected. What ripped Your done? car pulled back and ripped off. That I've never oh, seen that in my life. What's it say? Oh no, it's not in there. Oh, it was in there. You just gotta pause it. Okay, okay, okay. What you have done? <laughs> what you have done? To a loss. Okay, hold on. Pause it. Oh no! Pause it. It was ah, there. Ah, it's there. How do I get this? Oh wait, vertical maybe? There we go. Now I can zoom see. in. Oh, no, it's not there. Okay. Okay. Was it well, mine was definitely a three thirty. But you got left-hand drive, which was hand. cool. I got stuck with right-hand yeah. drive, which I'm not as good at. Anyways, it was an amazing experience. We had so much fun. I need to get those airdropped to me. I need okay. those files. I'm definitely um, airdropped them to you. It's really day. fun for me because Chelsea's an excellent driver and got to be better than me because he cares and pays attention to things. And I'm the guy that doesn't pay attention. Um, but on like little hero tracks like that, I get to still chop it up and chase him down, which is really fun for me. Yeah. You're a fast driver, though. You know what's crazy now is uh, for certain periods of time in my life, say like 2004 to 2000, I don't know, nine or something, we had to go drive places to be with better drivers than us. Yeah, we or did. just to even be able to tandem, I had to travel around the country, which is what I kind of did. Well, we kind of talked about that all the time. We're like, oh, where do we want to go? Who do we want to drive with? Yeah. And we would just find events in that area and go drive a couple of them. To and drive everybody with everybody. Oh, to travel. But yeah, but even then still, the people that we were going to drive with were pumped on it. And then they would line up a couple events mm -hmm. that we could drive usually. Mm -hmm. So we would drive a few. But That's now cool. there's a lot of good yeah, drivers everybody. everywhere. Yeah. So you I can mean, go tandem and just jam with people everywhere. That's good. We didn't get to do that in the beginning. All right. I hope I remind myself to insert those videos. Otherwise, this is terrible on television. You know. All right. Man, there's so many other things. Can you think of anything else? I mean, there's a lot. I mean, literally, so we've things. probably driven 100 events together. Easy. That's crazy. All right. This is just kind of a cool history lesson story. I don't know. It's not a lesson. It was just a cool story. Some people have asked us both to do podcasts, so that's what we just did. But we're on video for some reason. Cody was the one that asked me to do a podcast. Mm. And I I'm always asked, oh, you should do a chassis setup podcast. And I'm like, I'm not just going to give away everything I've worked for my entire <laughs> life for to everybody just so that they can mess it up because I didn't do a good job of explaining it in a short period of time. How about you help them out and you just tell them one book to go read to help them out? Mm, I don't. Uh... Tune to Win? 
I would say your best bet in understanding it is to just find the nearest circle track school and go to a circle track class. There are circle track schools? Yeah, a couple of them all over, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I would go to one and just, uh, obviously some of it doesn't apply, but it'll get your brain moving and trying some new things. My brain doesn't move anymore. I would write a book, but I'm like, not very good at that. Picture like, book? Picture, picture, picture book. book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay. I mean, that would be better for most people. If anyway. we go five more minutes, it's an hour. Oh. Oh. Okay. No, we can be done. What else? That's it. I got to fly out in the morning. Yep. But it's probably like... It's, it's only nine. Yeah, it's oh, early. my God. It feels like it's, it's later. It's dark early. Um, yeah. And then he today, drove some of the school, too. Oh, today. yeah. Let's plug that for a second. So... Want to say you have a school? School oh. of Drift? Yeah. So, Aaron, and uh, we've been trying to get you to drive up here for a while. Last time he came, we could have raced jet skis around Park because it was like five feet underwater. That was right after the Dubai trip. I know. We were supposed to come back and do a, a school day, and Aaron was going to come and help teach. But, uh, yeah, so we run the School of Drift. Uh, you can check us on Instagram or, uh, or on our website. It's just all under the org. Instagram's the same. Um, but yeah, we started a school a couple years ago at Pat's Acres up here in Oregon, and uh, I had been doing classes all over the U.S. trying to teach people uh, some driving etiquette, some economy of scale, like so that people could have drifting be more affordable, try to educate people on what to do with drifting to make themselves, A, have more fun and make it easier for them, because there's a lot of routes you can take that really go off the deep end in the wrong direction. Um, and I, we were going to events all over and like, I was like, man, everybody here could be so much better if they just did a couple things different. Like this person could just literally not like Aaron at the school was like entering and doing just the, letting off the handbrake and charging on the throttle and getting back to the handbrake. And I'm like, just don't do that. And he didn't do that. Yeah. And then the whole rest of the day was he perfect. He immediately made me better. <laughs> like, and he wasn't watching. He just told me from like a distance while yeah, he was Yeah, I just could hear else. it. Like, and I was like, ah, oh, like, let me just give him that one thing. Because everything else he's figuring out. Like just this one thing. And like I watch people at events do that all the time. And I'm like, and they just keep making the same mistake. And maybe it's nine out of the ten turns that require this one thing. And they're just struggling. And I'm like, ah, oh, I want to help you. So I like help them. And I was like, man, I should just run a school. And like... People that want to learn, they can come out and drive a car that's set up really, really well, that can turn 200 laps in a day and not worry about anything. And the person can fly in or drive to the track or whatever, get in our car, get instructed all day, improve in driving, and then go home and not worry about it. And all they, all they had to focus on was becoming a better driver, not if their car is set up right, if they you know, are using too much tire and they don't have more of it, if you know, oh, this or that, like, my car broke, my car did this. Like, it's just a way to show up and just learn for an entire day to hopefully excel their driving, like, what they would learn in a year. Like, that's my whole goal. And one day is to just kind of excel someone enough that, like, help them to grow what they would grow in a year even. Some of those things, if you are an attentive person, there is so much to learn from it, from as simple as if you just look around his cars – you can find out information that took us a decade to yeah. get that, first of all, we never really thought that a stock E36 M3 was as good it is, as it is, no. especially not with just a little bit of suspension tuning and SLR kit. You could even just do like a little NERP tech handle extension on a stock thing and get the stock you know, pads and the handbrake to work. If you just copy one of his school cars or buy one from him or whatever you do, you cop, buy the schematics. I don't know what you do. Um, <laughs> The, uh, you are so much farther ahead in this world than all of us were 10 years ago. Oh, yeah. Just by copying the car or just by having one day of learning. That's mental. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Cheating. Like, it is. No, I tell people all the time, like, and, and you were there, and I was talking to one of my students. I was like, you're like, how am I doing? I'm like, oh, you're doing really, really well. Like, I mean, you've improved this. Like, there's a couple things you're still working on, but, like, the improvement is great. And then I'm like, but, like, not to, like, you know, pump your head up or anything, but you're better than I was seven or eight years into drifting. And mm -hmm. they're like, what? I'm like, they're like, I've only been here for two days. I'm like, yeah, you're better than I was a decade mm -hmm. into it. It's and cheating. It's, it's cheat. Like maybe they don't have all the situational things and all that yeah. happening yet. But like if you watched me drive 10 years into my driving career and watch this dude drive on his second day of drifting, you'd be like, that dude's really good. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, damn it. It's because painful. The, the technology, the knowledge, the, you know, the, 
ability to have a place where the cars are you know are good there's no like oh i'm worried about it or i'm not like it just it just they work they're good and uh just you know being able to pick nitpick little things and driving to make it better and one of the most important things i'm 20 seconds away from an hour <laughs> one of the most important things is knowing not what to do, which sounds crazy, but don't put a turbo kit on your car. Don't modify injectors. Don't get the thing tuned if it doesn't need to be tuned. Don't go buy all the extra pieces. Don't buy an aftermarket intake manifold. Don't go engine swap a vehicle. Don't do this and that. Because those things, what? One hour. Oh, those things would slow you down, which is what we did all along. Well, that's what you did. I never did anything. You turbo kitted a Miata. Yeah. They make 95 horsepower stock. It's yeah. a necessity. But my point was, is you would be better off. I also off. installed a Gretti turbo kit. It was like $800. Right, but you would have been better off in that E36 that you have as a school car for now sure. than your, um, whatchamacallit. Oh, for sure. Than your but like, Miata I also would not have spent and all that effort and time and money to build a school car back then. That school car cost more to buy, build than my Turbo M3 did. Because <laughs> it has spherical everything. Right, but my point is is that car knowing what to do now, yeah. that car would have been better off in Nopi than your full on oh, like sure. turbo car and yeah, stuff. Sure. Just knowing what to not to do is super, super important because most of the things I screwed up in my career, drift career, is uh, I mean, you're just definitely putting still too making much a career out of drifting. Eh, <laughs> I don't know. Drift week. Drift Boop. week. I have this Drift Week hat, by the way, and I do not have a Drift Week Instagram account. I do not have a Drift Week website. But there he's is no also Drift the Week. guy that wears the band t-shirt to the show. You mean the Drift Week yeah, hat? Yeah, he, he shows up. I had to... He has a Drift Week hat while he's going into the tracks to talk about Drift Week. You're like a Bible salesman. The worst part <laughs> is... The worst part is that the track owners recognize me now they, because of the Drift yeah, Week hat. Yeah. I wanted to be incognito, and I didn't go incognito. Okay, we did it. We made it now. Adam LZ colored drift week hat. I didn't even design it. Mm. We know. But it would be a good thing. I'm terrible at design work. Okay, that's it. I I'm gonna look back I'm after gonna this give after I'm YouTube dead. Videos of some of this driving we were talking about. I hopefully I put it in. Um, so she said. Uh, um, no, I was gonna say to look back on this video after one of us are dead oh, or something. Poor record has been spinning. Go on take the it off. The We're done. Time. Anyways. <laughs>